So the farm uh, surrounds the school and I and surrounds the school with natural land that has been cared for. Uh, and that feeling of care, caring for the land comes through. So I think it ends up feeling like the land and that cared for farm is a hug around the school. And people feel that when they come and visit here, never been here before, they notice the beauty, but they have a feeling about being here, of being safe and protected. And it's because the land's been cared for. I'm taking you to the farm that I bought out here. And I bought this farm in 1989. I was still living in Columbus and I had three teenage children. I was a single mom. I had a job with the state of Ohio that was a pretty intense job. But one of the exercises that happened in this stress reduction uh, workshop was where you close your eyes and you relax all the muscles in your body and you imagine yourself walking down this road and then you go over a hill and just right below it is the place that you want to be to relax. But what uh, I imagine was a farm. And just right over there it meets with the North Fork. And that's the beginning of the property that I ended up buying. But that day when I came up this hill, you know, coming up this hill, it's, it's a smaller bridge and this is this bumpy dirt road and my antique car. And I'm driving around this corner here and I can't really get around this corner. This is a pretty bad corner. So I'm going around this corner can't really get around here and so I have to back up to get a better start and right there is a sign that says farm for sale. Does anybody need sugar in their tea? So you know I was a really good uh, gardener uh, and I gardened always all my life and um, so I thought well and I'm really smart right so I thought I'll, I'll be able to be a farmer. <laughs> This is me when I was a teenager. And this is Mrs. Clark, who was my gardening mentor. This is my dad. So when I farmed, I uh, read these books and went to these conferences, and there's people who tell you you really don't need tractors to farm. You can do it all by these Italian roto rototillers. And I learned from reading books and trying to do it that the best way to learn how to farm is to watch somebody who's farming that if somebody has enough time or makes their money by writing books about farming, that means they're not making money farming, right? Mm -hmm. So they probably don't know what they're talking about. So I started out farming without a tractor. And uh, at the end of the first year, I had tendonitis in my shoulder, uh, my elbows so badly that I couldn't uh, squeeze a, a bottle of shampoo. And I realized I was gonna have to stop farming. I didn't make enough money that first year. And I realized I couldn't farm without a tractor. And two things happened at the end of that first summer. One was Rich and Mary Sidwell, um, who were my neighbors and who helped me out while I was down there, <laughs> said, and I helped them out. This was in 1999 when the school was closing. They asked me to apply for the director of admissions job at Only Friends School and to do that part-time. A friend of mine from Columbus sent me an article in the Columbus Dispatch about a contest for farm equipment uh, for women farmers in Ohio. And so I won, I won that. And so then I had a tractor, and, and this is a picture of me coming back. This is me driving the tractor off uh, out of the, out of the uh, dump truck. This is the Raven Rock dump truck. Mm -hmm. So instead of quitting after the first year, I kept farming, right? My contribution as an assistant farmer here at Only Friends School is to really increase dramatically the amount of food and the quality of the food that we can grow for students to eat. We have the ability here because of the land and, and the infrastructure and the skills sets that are totally different between Don and I to grow all meat, all vegetables, and even milk eventually.
for the school and all, all fruit. And then all of this food would have almost zero carbon imprint on the world. All the food would be organic and healthy and all the food would have that love of many generations of care for the soil that goes into that food. Bring down boiling water for the uh, chickens. That's what's in here. So, it helps the water see freezes overnight. And So why, why do you have to bring the water to the hens? Well, it'll freeze. Chickens have to have water to lay eggs. And having fresh water for animals in the winter is very difficult because it freezes. Right. And uh, the warmer the water is, the easier they, the, you can see that they're thirsty. They like water first thing in the morning. I have and we have bucket. chickens because students can also work with chickens. They're not dangerous in any way to the students. And you can s get a concrete product every day. You get the eggs. And we can clearly see the difference between our eggs and store-bought eggs. Just when we have the cooked, when we eat breakfast here, these eggs are all ugly and white versus our eggs, which are really, they taste better and they look so much better. They have, they're way healthier for you to have. Uh, eggs from chickens that have been outside and fed green things and uh, have fresh air and sunshine. <laughs> I do like chickens. I, I'm embarrassed to say that, right? <laughs> Look at the coats! Oh, oh goodness! <laughs> Look at the goats! We have goats um, uh, <laughs> because they're an animal that students can relate to very easily. They're not very dangerous animal. They're pretty cute. They do all that jumping around. And they, have, they they come up to you. They're not afraid of you. You stay back by that the running of the goats. We took farms where there were animals and vegetables and they were a perfect close system. The manure from the animals fertilized the vegetables. The vegetables were raised, you know, some of it if you call vegetables hay, to feed the animals and we had a perfectly integrated uh, farm system. That's how most farms were more than 50 years ago. Now we've taken agriculture and split those apart, and so now the products that are produced by an animal farm, mainly manure, becomes a waste product and a burden and an expense to uh, stop. And so it's important for us to have some animals and compost, but also to have vegetables. And when we raise vegetables, it's important to raise them in a way that preserves nutrients and uh, preserves the soil. I feel that learning about healthy food and healthy farming um, is something that I've been led to by God. I have made choices that are uh, against your econo the traditional economic choices and the traditional choices of not being in a powerful position, uh, not having a lot of money, not living in a city because of this calling. And so because I have this calling as a person, um, 